Since we are looking into the risky bets of the institutions, banks, and central banks, we can follow their actions and what their intentions are. With so much underlying risk, you would assume that at any moment the cracks can expand and engulf the vast majority of financial assets. We are simply waiting for the central banks to pull the plug. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the underlying risks that have presented themselves. Let's begin. How bets against volatility fed the stock market route. So we had the CBOE VIX options volume spiking to a record high. It wasn't necessarily that the VIX itself hit a record high, but this is specifically here. We're looking at the volumes on the volatility index of the S&P 500 hitting that record level on Friday. Nobody was expecting this. The trade was all about shorting volatility. It kept going lower and lower and lower. And in fact, the volatility index made its way to eight, eight, historically non-existent. And so the market was tr trading on that fact that it would continue its descent down into zero or as close to it as possible. But what happened? An anomaly occurred, some fear found its way into the market and so the vix rose and in that moment all of the trades that were presenting themselves pushing this downward shorting it suddenly they were in big big trouble that's part of what happened in this little route that we experienced now there's a bunch of stuff that i want to cover here i'm just going to go through very quickly so stick with me for a moment a plunge in global equity markets has thrown light on an increasingly popular strategy among investors shorting volatility the growing use of this trade contributed to the largest fall in some u.s equity markets since 2011. so people don't understand really what happens here when you have fear the markets can decline, volatility can increase. But the market was betting on the fact that there will be no fear, the Fed is going to be there to backstop any problems, and the market was continuing higher and higher, everything was great, until that changes. The Dow Jones fell 4.6% as the VIX surged to its highest closing level in two and a half years. That rapid rise shattered the low volatility environment of recent years and drove some heavy losses for investors following an era in which popularity of shorting volatility has grown rapidly. And why? Because investors are chasing yield. You look around the world, interest rates are at zero, they're at negative territory, or at the very lowest point they can be. Some central banks have kept them a little higher, but generally, we're at historically low levels right now, no matter where you look around the world. And so, as a result, investors are looking around. Where can I find some yield? I need to make profits. I need to make profits. Okay, let's take on some risk. So that brings me to the uh, further point in this article. This is the CIO of Fidelity, okay? So he's a big name. In a world where there is no risk-free rate, rates are very low or zero almost everywhere. You really have to take some risk for a return. And that right there is when you know you are reaching a top. Shorting volatility means betting that the measure will remain low or fall further, often by buying an exchange-traded product that rises in value when gauges of volatilities decline. Okay, I hope you understand what that means. This was what they were all doing. They were all doing that, shorting volatility, right? How does such a trading method feed through to tank broader equity markets? Well, essentially, they were all taking that bet, but something happened and it reversed course. 
The paper suggests that the growth in the use of such strategies and the correlation between them risked a dramatic reversal as investors, investors scrambled to cover their short positions. Okay, one last thing I wanted to cover here to explain what that means for those who don't know. To cover a short position, investors who are directly shorting volatility, now check this out, buy back the asset they sold in the first place, in this case, volatility. What I find interesting here is that they're referring to volatility as an asset. That's how topsy-turvy these markets are. The financial system barely exists. It's a fictional world. It is nothing but the imagination of some mad scientists. You can buy something called volatility that, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't exist. And then, not only can you buy it, but you can sell it even if you don't own it. Now, think about how ridiculous that sounds. As I'm saying it, I'm, I'm trying to stop myself because it's not right. But that's the reality. Shorting something that doesn't even exist. My goodness, what kind of world is this? What kind of financial system has been created? Think about that for a second. It's an asset, you can buy it, but it doesn't exist, and you can even sell it when you don't own it. I, I'm speechless, really. Oh, and by the way, that has the power to crash the market. In this case, they're suggesting 13%. From its high point to the low, they're suggesting that the Dow futures were down 13%. I looked at the charts myself. I saw 10% on the Dow Jones industrial average. Maybe. Let's take the more conservative number of 10%. Okay? What underlying risks were exposed? Were the derivatives there? Was it a company that went bankrupt? Did we have widespread defaults? Was a country claiming insolvency? Was the uh, general underlying assets seen to be less than what they were actually uh, had there? Did we have some sort of derivative product that was failing and that started a counterparty risk? Was it the credit default swaps, mortgage-backed securities, and anything else? No, it was the threat of interest rates rising. Just a hair, that's all, just a hair. And what happened? Market came down 10%. The market came down 10% because of that. Think about what I'm talking about here. I don't care what the haters say. I don't care what those who won't listen to this information say. The underlying risks are there. We know that. We've been covering that for a while now, and I'm glad that you stuck with me because you see what's happening. Look at the previous article I was just covering, and notice what I'm talking about here with the VIX, with the so-called assets, and then the effect it could have. When trading is halted, the Fidelity website shut down because of this little tiny issue. All right, this is the biz. Now, the biz tracks the over-the-counter derivatives. In my book, I quoted them as saying, they do a report every quarter, I believe it is, and they, suggested 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives. That was my, in my first book. I later read numbers. It was only seven, only 700 trillion. I also heard 2.2 quadrillion. But now today, they're suggesting that there has been some deleveraging in the, <laughs> over the counter derivatives, OTC. And that is less than 600 trillion. I mean, 
this is definitely deleveraging at its finest. Congratulations to the stock market, the financial system. You've done a good job at getting rid of some of that bloat, getting on the treadmill and releasing some of that. Of course, that's some horrible sarcasm there. The derivatives market has grown considerably over the years, and that's where the risk truly is. At the top of the pyramid, we have derivatives. It's an upside-down pyramid. On the very, very bottom, if you have read my first book, you will know I draw my pyramid upside-down. At the very bottom, in a practically invisible piece, you have real assets, okay? That's people's houses. That's, if you want to consider it, stocks. You know, the GDP, but the real GDP, perhaps. Then on top of that, we have all the frac... I would, before even including fractional, I would even put down here, you know, the f fake numbers that they give us, right? The GDPs and everything else. Then on top of that, we have the, by the way, this is absolutely not the scale. Then we have the fractional reserve banking, which exists on top of that, where they're able to multiply all of our assets considerably. And then on top of that, we have derivatives. So this is basically the main focus of the Money GPS, the original book, and the derivatives. And that sits on top of all of these real assets. What do you think? if there's some impact on the little tiny bottom that's holding everything in place. Well, I got a good feeling that there's gonna be something that topples it over and sends it all coming down. What it's going to be, I have no idea, but there's so much counterparty risk. There is so much fragility in this market, and it is showing its true self today that even the smallest of risks can make the biggest of difference. The market is supposed to be robust. It's supposed to be able to take these kind of hits, but it's not, absolutely not. The market is just waiting. It's waiting for that day where it comes down and then the Federal Reserve has to step in and save the day and then everything will be fine again. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. We'll see. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel. If you want to support this channel, all you have to do is give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as well. There are 85,000 people here, so definitely uh, would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And you can also comment on these videos. When you comment, it helps to keep up the activity on the videos, helps to keep these uh, videos coming up in the search rankings. Of course, if you want to share these videos as well, I do appreciate that very much. Thank you all. Take care.